Hey everyone, I'm April. I'm the owner and creator over at Tis So Sweet. I make custom bags, purses, totes, zipper pouches, and other unique handmade items. I love all things Disney and absolutely enjoy making bags that bring joy to your heart and a smile to your face. If you would like to follow me in my shop, you can find me over on Instagram at Tis So Sweet. I'd love to connect with you and get to know you. Now that we've gotten to know each other some, I would like to welcome you to our Sewing 101 series here on Auntie Tay's YouTube channel. In this series, we will be going over the basics. I'm talking from the ground up. We will be going over how to navigate your sewing machine, how to read a basic sewing pattern, basic sewing lingo, and so much more. So with all that being said, let's get sewing. Alrighty, today we are going to be going over navigating your machine. In today's video, we are going to be walking through the Singer MX60. This is linked in Auntie Tay's Amazon store, so make sure you go and check it out. This is your pedal and your power cord. When your power cord is plugged into your machine and the power switch is turned on, if the pedal is pressed, the needle will start to go. So plug in your power cord and place your pedal on the ground near where you're going to be sitting. Once you have your pedal in place, your cord plugged into a power outlet and into your sewing machine, you'll be able to turn on the power switch and that will also turn on your light. Now moving on to the front of our machine, here is our stitch selector. This dial, as you can see, has several different stitches. Now these three are your straight stitches. So the reason why there are three of them is because there are different stitch lengths. This one is the tightest stitch length. This one is a standard stitch length. And this one will be like for your top stitching. This is a longer stitch length. So this will be great for top stitching and basting. After those are your zigzag stitches, then your decorative stitches, and then your buttonhole stitches. And this dial can be moved just like this. This is your reverse sewing lever. When you need a back stitch, what you'll do is you'll go forward a couple stitches, stop, press this lever, and then go back a couple stitches, then release the lever and go a couple more stitches. So anytime you need to go backwards, you will have to keep pressing this down until you're ready to go forward again. Next up is this hand wheel. Now, it might be because of a little bit of my southern background, but when I talk about using this hand wheel, I say hand crank because you got to crank it. <laughs> so what you need to do is never ever turn this away from you. You always want to turn this towards you. If you turn this away from you, you might end up having all your threads bunch up and then it will cause you a ginormous headache to clean it out and get all your threads untangled. So always, always turn the hand crank towards you. This is the bobbin winder spindle. This is what you'll put your bobbin on in order to load it with thread. And this wheel right here is the bobbin winder stopper. So once your bobbin gets full, your machine will automatically stop. Now don't worry, we're gonna go over all of this later on in this video. This little loop right here is a thread guide and right here is your spool pin where your thread will sit. This is another thread guide with the bobbin thread guide up top. This skinny dial right here is your thread tension dial. I do suggest keeping it on the default position, which is normally around a 4.5. Now, if you do have any tension issues, you can adjust it slightly, but maybe look on YouTube for a couple of tips and tricks for your sewing machine. This lever right here is the presser foot lever. This is what allows your presser foot to go up and down when you're moving your project in and off your sewing machine. Right here is your presser foot. This is what holds your fabrics into place as you're sewing. And here is your needle plate. Now some needle plates have seam guidelines. If yours doesn't, I suggest using some washi tape so you can keep your seams nice and even. This little piece right here on the side of your machine is a thread cutter. So when you're done sewing, you can easily slip your threads right through this little divot right here and cut your threads. This is your removable extension table and accessory storage. When you first get your machine, when you take this piece off, all of your accessories will be inside. Now I do know a lot of sewists that when they take this off to use their machine without this on, they fill this with candy. <laughs> so it's also great for candy storage. Now let's quickly go over the accessories that come with your machine. 
like I said before, your accessories will probably be stored right here in this removable piece. Your all-purpose foot should already be on your machine, but it might be in this little baggie too. Then this is the zipper foot, and this is your buttonhole foot. Now this piece is your darning plate. The darning plate is used for free motion quilting or for darning. This blocks the feed dogs, that way your fabric can move freely underneath your machine. Next up is your seam ripper and cleaning brush. This cleaning brush has a seam ripper on the end. Then you should have received two spool pin felts, a pack of needles, and a pack of Singer Class 15 bobbins. Now for this machine, you can only use these type of bobbins. If you try to use other bobbins and they work, it might mess up your machine. So please stick to the Class 15 bobbins for this machine. Now that we've walked through the whole machine, let's load our bobbin and thread our machine. So first, we're gonna take one of those spool pin felts and place it on the spool pin. Then we're gonna put our thread right on top. Pull the thread from the spool and through this upper thread guide. Then you're gonna wind the thread clockwise around the bobbin winder tension disc. Then bring that thread out towards you and we're gonna put this thread through this hole on the bobbin. While holding onto the thread, place the bobbin on the bobbin spindle. Now keep hold of your thread and push the whole spindle to the right till it clicks. Now hold your thread end up and step on the foot control pedal. If you wanna go slow at first just to see how it's gonna go, you can easily press on the foot and then increase your speed as you get more comfortable. So let the thread go around the bobbin a couple times and then stop and cut that thread that you're holding on to. Then pedal to the metal until it stops. Once your machine stops or slows down almost all the way, release the pedal and cut the thread. Then push the bobbin to the left and remove it. When this bobbin winder spindle is in the bobbin winding position, the machine will not sew and the hand wheel will not turn. So to start sewing, make sure that you push it back to the left, that way it's in the sewing position. Next, we're gonna insert the bobbin into our machine. Remove your accessory tray and open the hinged cover. Pull on the bobbin case tab and remove the whole bobbin case. Hold the bobbin in one hand and insert the bobbin so that the thread runs in a clockwise direction. Then we're gonna pull the thread through the slit under the finger. Leave a six inch tail of thread so that way the machine can pull it up. To load the bobbin into the machine, hold the bobbin case by the hinge latch and place it in the machine just like this. Then make sure that latch is securely closed. Now let's thread the upper thread. Your thread should already be on the spool since we just finished winding the bobbin. Now if you have a different machine than this, please pull out your manual when you are first threading your machine and follow the instructions step by step. I know for some this might seem like a simple thing, but I really encourage you to pull out your manual and follow it step by step. So on this machine, we are going to raise the needle to its highest position by turning the hand wheel towards you. Remember, we don't ever wanna turn it away from us. So turn your hand wheel so that the mark on the hand wheel points directly up. Then we're gonna raise our presser foot. Before we go any further, make sure your machine is in the off position. We don't wanna accidentally hit our foot pedal while we're threading our machine. Now we're gonna pull the thread from the spool and through this thread guide like so. Now we're gonna go down through this channel and then back up like this and then loop it through this take up lever just like this. Now we're gonna bring it down and pass the thread behind this thin wire needle clamp guide and then you'll go down towards your needle to be threaded from the front to back. Once you are done threading your needle, you'll want to pull some extra thread through. You can even pull it all the way through and then cut it with a thread cutter on the side. Now the last step, we want to pull that bobbin thread up from the bottom of the machine so that way we are ready to sew. Hold your upper thread with your left hand and turn the hand wheel towards you counterclockwise, lowering and raising the needle. 
Once you have raised your needle, when you pull on your top thread, you might be able to see that your bobbin thread is up through the needle plate hole. It's like a little loop. So you can take your seam ripper and pull that loop all the way through so both threads are all the way out. Now, if you're having a hard time raising your bobbin thread, check to make sure that your bobbin thread is not trapped by the hinge cover or by the removable extension table. Give yourself a pat on the back or a hand clap because you have just succeeded at threading your machine successfully. Now it's time to get to sewing.